Brian Davis, Home Improved Man. Um, we're going to do some work on this light up here. So this is uh, an old family heirloom, and as you can see, it came with a, uh, a chain and uh, a, a wire that plugs into a wall outlet. Well, in that particular location that I have back here, um, I've got a, a place for a ceiling mounted light. And it's been sitting like this, sort of hanging off of a, a, a light bracket, uh, open and exposed, still running down the wire for far too long, uh, longer than I'm willing to admit. And so what I'm going to do today, cut the wire, and I'm going to wire it directly into that uh, light box up in the ceiling. And so there, there's all sorts of kits that are out there um, that will allow this sort of thing to happen, to go from... Uh, if you do have just the, the shade and the bulb and, you know, if you need a chain, if you need a wire, uh, if you need the bracket up top. In this case, all I need is this to be able to mount it up to there. It's got uh, the, the ring that the, the chain that I already have will connect to. It's got the hole uh, underneath. That the, uh, that the wire runs up into the ceiling. I have the, the bracket that'll connect to the ceiling. I may not even need that. I think that the bracket that I have up there I'll be able to reuse. Um, so the chain connects to this part. The wire will, will weave through the chain links, run up through the hole, come out of the ceiling, and then it will connect to the, uh, the existing wire up there. So one of the most important tools you're going to need for this is what is commonly called a pen tester. Um, and this ensures that we're not working with live wires. And once you know that the wires are not live, then a lot of anxiety that people have around working with electricity just sort of goes away. It can be terrifying, and it should be, because it can be deadly, it can be very uncomfortable, and you know, all, all sorts of variations in between. So one of the things that we want to test, first of all, is are we working with live wires? When there is power going through the wire, it beeps and it goes red. Now, of course, it's not just this wire. In fact, this wire is the least, least worrisome because I can unplug this one and then I'm done. Now, I knew that was going to happen because I turned the switch on. And I always... I, 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 you should always do that. Always, because what it tells you is that this is working. And so I want to know that this is live. I want to know that that wire is live, but I come over here, turn off the switch, come back up here, and now we get no tone, no red light. So now the wire is not active and I will not be electrocuted. Not getting electrocuted, that's one of my goals on this little project here. One of the things that we want to know as we're getting started is how much chain we want to keep. Right now, this light is quite close to the ceiling. And the reason why I do that is because sometimes I move the table that it's, that's underneath it out of the way, and I don't like hitting my head on the light. I could lower it another, let's say, 12 inches and uh, have it closer to the table. Not always a bad idea. Um, really, from a table's, from sitting at a table's perspective, you don't, you just don't want it so low that it that it hits you in the head, uh, or so low that the cone of light is too narrow. So you want, I want a little bit of play in there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add about eight inches of chain to this, and that's where I'm going to remove it. Now, I need to cut the chain. There's a couple options you have. The the basic option is a hacksaw. Uh, you just want to make sure whatever tool you have is designed for cutting metal. Uh, there's a lot of uh, saws out there that you can use for both wood and metal. So just make, make sure that if you're having to cut a chain, you have a chain that will handle metal. It's not always necessary to cut the chain. 
some of these the chains that work in these situations are, are somewhat thin and they could be bent with a little bit of effort. You might need a tool or two to do that. But in this case, I can use pliers to bend the chain. This is the spot at which I want to separate the chain. And so, there, I am done. I want about another it's always better to have too much wire than too little. So I'm going to add on top of this chain, I'm going to take another uh, 10 inches, it's more than enough, and I'm going to cut the wire at that spot. Remember, I have unplugged it, so I know there's a lot, no electricity in there. Anytime you're working with electricity, double check. This wire that I'm cutting, could there be electricity in it? No, it's unplugged. So what is left is a lot of chain and a lot of wire and the plug. This is what I'm not using anymore. They sell kits that'll go the other direction as well. In this case, I'm going from uh, a, a, a plugged-in light to a hardwired light, and you can go the other direction too from a hardwired light to a plug-in light. Now, because this is my final end, I'm going to need to bend this last link to be able to fit onto that. Um, actually, I could use this, the one that I removed. That's going to be how I'm going to link it to the final piece. Now, because the chain was already there, I didn't have to do this, but you want to weave the, the cord through the chain to keep it contained. And then you want to run the cord through that last little ring. And then, of course, that last link that I bent, I'm now going to put that onto the ring and then bend the link back straight. Now I am ready, the light is ready. That's the first part. The next step is to be able to get my, my mounting apparatus up on the ceiling. And so this is, uh, this piece right here is what, I can't show you, but the, that little ring that I put on the end of the chain, this is what it screws into. And so I need to be able to get this up on the ceiling. I was wondering if I could, if this, piece would be able to screw up into the, the bracket I have there and it won't, so that means I'm reuse, uh, or I'm using this new one. I need one black wire, I need one white wire, and then of course you have the ground. There's a bunch of other stuff up there. Um, most of it doesn't matter, but it's a good time to kind of test, test to make sure. Pull out my little pen tester. Make sure, first of all, everything is dead. That's good to know. There's something live up there. Now, being an old house, this house was built in 1966, I believe. And I don't really know what all that wiring is. And it really doesn't matter. All that matters is I have a neutral... I have a hot wire, a hot wire that is on a switch, and then of course the ground. Now I can test it. I'm going to come over here, turn on my switch. Black wire should give me tone. White wire doesn't. The bare ground wire is going to be there um, attached to the the uh, um, the box. So whatever all that other stuff is up there doesn't matter. There's nothing that can, there's nothing dangerous that's up there. There's nothing that's going to short things out. And the circuit that I want to tap into is as I would expect it to be. 
the light that I have is a little heavy. So I, I want to spend as little time as possible trying to hold it up and trying to, to navigate you know, the different things that need to be connected and attached. So I'm going to put this piece up first. I'm going to make sure that the two wires that I'm connected to are available to me. And then this little bracket here has a, uh, a where the ground screws into. So put this in, tie in the ground, and then I'll go, we'll go and bring the other light into play. Before I begin, I'm going to go test it one more time. Why not? Sometimes you'll get like a single beep or a double beep. Um, it's kind of the residual power inside something. So then just go back, hit it. Yeah, it's good. When you put the bracket in, you're typically want to get the black bracket flush with the drywall. Now, if the drywall is situated as such that the bracket just naturally nestles up to it, obviously that's easy. In this case, I could take the bracket higher um, because the drywall is out of the way, but I'm going to stop at a place where the, it's in line with the drywall. There are certain, you might find that that's not the appropriate space once you, once you go to put in the light, but that's a good rule of thumb. Now I want to connect the ground to that green uh, screw that I had on the bracket. When I go to put, mount the light, don't forget to put this in line with the, the wire. Now I'm going to run the wire through the threaded uh, nut, uh, nut in the bracket, pull it out the side so that I can connect Now it's not going to stay in place without my holding on to it, but I'm not holding up the light. I'm holding on to the wire. And the weight of the light is on the bracket itself. So now I'm going to pre prepare the wire by stripping the plastic off of the wire. There's lots of ways to do it. The one of the ways that I find most effective is one of these. It's got different uh, thicknesses of wire that it's going to remove. I started the thickest wire on the, 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 uh, on the pliers and work my way towards the thinnest until I find the one that'll cut the plastic and will leave all of the wire inside un unmarred. Now it's important that you connect the correct wire uh, of the light to the correct wire of the uh, uh, inside the house. In old incandescent bulbs, it didn't matter, but with modern halogen, not halogen, but uh, um, compact fluorescent and LED, it does. On these, these wires, typically the, the wire that has all the lines on it is the neutral. That's the one that connects to the white wire inside the house. All right, my wires are connected. Push the wire nuts up into the, up into the uh, electrical box, making sure that they stay connected, make sure they don't make any excessive contact with any other wires up there. I can push the loose wire from the, the light fixture up inside to create so there's not as much slack. And then, oops. 
It's not fully connected yet, but it's in there enough to be able to hold it in place. So now I can start to play with it a little bit. As I tighten up the screw, it's going to pull the, um, the flange, the, the shield, up tighter against the, against the ceiling. And then there's a nut that I can tighten up against it. Now, it's a little lower than I would like it, but I can change all that uh, at either end. I can pull it up tighter, and I've got extra chain now so that I can raise it and lower it as I feel fit. We test the light. The light works. It's a lot cleaner without that chain hanging down, and I am... Uh, Pretty happy with that. <clears throat> I hope you found this helpful and I hope that uh, your next project is successful. Thanks for watching.